Okay. Oh my god. Sal, I'm gonna need a third intro from you. Okay. <laughs> third <laughs> intro. Third time's a charm. <laughs> same energy. This time with gusto. Right. Same powerful gusto you used before, right? All right. Oh. There you go. There you go. I'm Sal. And I play Sal, the druid, the tank druid. We'll see how long that lasts. I'm surprised you're able to do it the same exact way the third time. That's actually kind of that's <laughs> impressive. Oh, I did forget one thing. I've played probably about two hours of D&D total ever. So Fantastic. All right, we'll go ahead and move on down to Augie. Okay. Hello again. My name is Augustus. I play the character Arthur in this game. He is a cleric. And what I do in life is I work in the United States Air Force. And what my character does is he pretty much goes around making sure that he doesn't suffer the same fate as he did before. Okay. And as, as I was saying before that everyone could hear me say, I guess, you know, deep, deep backstory. Sounds good. Look forward to see how it plays out. I love in-depth characters that kind of show who they are the more they're out there. You know what I mean? So I look forward to seeing how that looks. Rick. Let's hear a little hey. bit about Rick and Rick World. Uh, hey there, guys. Uh, my name's Rick. Uh, I'm going to be playing uh, a character by the name of Richard D. Ross. Um, Sal, don't you have to ask me a question after that? What does the D stand for? Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm going to be playing a uh, elf bard uh, who grew up uh, relatively poor. Um, saw some guy basically playing music at a pub and saw that all these females were after him. Um, so I, I'm going to be just chasing uh, females. That's my number one pursuit in life. Over glory, over fame is uh, a pretty face. Okay, very. Uh, this this is right on right on point for most bards out there not, uh, that I've I've seen. So. You will Very have generic. Those opportunities, but they will not be. Uh, well, well, we'll see how they go. That's the, we're going to leave it at that. Um, I guess last but not least, Kim Bakamus. Who are you? Hi. What, what are you about? I'm Bakamus. I play a uh, stout halfling named Bakaluda. Uh, I really like to cook. Um, so real life and, uh, in game now, and we're going to do some crazy shit. It's going to be great. Okay. All right. That's, we got our introductions and they all could be heard this time. So excellent. Good work, everybody. And me, especially for screwing up like three times. But anyhow, I suppose with all that being said, we should, oh, my dogs are acting up when that, whenever I start doing D and D, they know it's time to battle. So they start doing Mortal Kombat with each other. We're going to go ahead and jump over to the game here and figure out where exactly you guys are and what you're doing. Hi. So first, let's get some tunes going. It's been too quiet, hasn't it? So, Rick. Ricky. Yo. I believe you were technically the, uh, the speaker for your team. Why are you yes. guys all together? So, um, originally... Uh, in order for us to make some money, uh, we joined the circus, and that's where I ended up meeting Sal and Baka. Sal was a dancing bear for the circus, and Baka was a sh Um, unfortunately, due to an outbreak, um, the circus ended up closing down indefinitely. So we were in need for new jobs, uh, we had to hook up with the Adventurers Guild. Um, because we're relatively new and kind of scrubs, they, uh, let us have Augustus come with us in order to kind of like lead us and show us the way and be a healer because um, we really don't know how to take care of ourselves. We, we're used to like a life of partying, drinking, um, circus, circus, you know, life. circus life. So uh, Augie is kind of to be our backbone um, while we, well, you know, go on some adventures, make some money, you know, put food on the table. Okay. So get chicks. <laughs> and into get chicks, chicks. Yeah. that's right yeah <laughs> so that's where you all have uh, kind of built this bond a bit I don't know necessarily how long y'all were in this circus together but long enough to be comfortable going into Two years. various dangerous events I'm sure well the most recent contract you got was to invest a town called Welton they said they were having uh, 
a problem with the wildlife. Essentially, they're, they're, what, what do you call them? Like a flock, herds. Yeah, we'll call them herds. Uh, herds of animals and livestock and whatnot have been getting messed with a lot more than normal. And it's uh, pissed a lot of people off. So they wanted to pull in a, a culling squad, a group to come in and take care of whatever this menace is that's harassing them nonstop. That's where you guys come in. So, starting off, we're going to set the stage a little bit here. It's early in the day. You guys have been traveling for a few hours. Uh, it's about... It's about 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock in the afternoon. Or early afternoon. Not pre-afternoon. Uh, sun shining. Not many clouds in the sky. It actually feels like a really pleasant day out right now. You're continuing your trek towards the town of Welton right now on the road. Ricky, you up front. Arthur by your side. Sal and Bacchimus directly behind you, Ricky. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> you hey, yeah. isn't it, boys? Look at this weather. Ah, uh, yo. I really want some of that meat from these, uh... You think they'll give us some of these uh, dead animals for me to cook? You I'm thinking about kill? food, guys. Nah, my goal in life is to cook anything and everything I can at least once. Even human? Okay, maybe maybe we bring it back down a little bit. <laughs> what about elf? I mean... And then I just uh, kind of look over at everyone like, hmm. Maybe the ears. God. <laughs> I'm not sleeping I'm next to you. I'm ears. Um, <laughs> I'm only half elf. <laughs> Now, do you safe then? You're fine. You're fine. As long as they're oh, this... good, I'm hungry. That's it. <laughs> this kind of weather uh, brings out the, uh, you know, the nice sundresses. Am I right, boys? <laughs> Why don't you sing us a song, Rick? Nah, I'd rather keep my voice for when I see a pretty young lady walk by. <gasps> what do you mean? Why should I waste my tunes with you? And I just look really sad. <laughs> you were trying to eat my ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and then I hand him like an elf, like an elf ear shaped lollipop. And I'm like, here, they're delicious. Uh, yeah, I will save that for later. And I throw it in my bag and never look at it ever again. Arthur. You've been rather quiet. Make a perception check for me. I know if y'all have any questions about any checks or how to do anything, do not hesitate to ask. That's what we're here for. All right. Oh, that's actually really good. So as your teammates are uh, discussing the, the ideas of, I believe, elf ear cooking and lollipops, <laughs> uh, you hear in the distance uh, a low shout. Sounds like a an older gentleman's shout not necessarily a shout of pain but more like a like a rah, 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 like one of those shouts like so, he's he's yelling at something angrily uh just uh, about maybe about a hundred feet hundred feet ish ahead of you hey guys i i heard something on the distance did you guys hear it what did it sound like it sounded like a grunt almost like someone was yelling at i can't really explain it myself <laughs> Well, what do you want to do? Run up there and find out? I kind of am curious, actually. Yeah, let's go check it out. Yeah, maybe, maybe there'll be some out. girls there. Let's go. All right, so you guys are, are you guys just picking up the pace and moving forward? Or are you continuing on your same exact pace? Or how are you guys moving forward now? Fast. We're going to head, head over to the voices that we heard. Or the grunt. Okay. Uh,. The grunt sounded like it was coming from down the trail, actually the direction you're already going. So you guys pick up the pace and start maybe power walking, light jogging in that direction. And once you do... Hey guys, slow down. <laughs> My legs are too short. Well, that's your fault right there. Come on. I'm, I'm literally sprinting while everybody's just jogging right now. <laughs> you round the corner <laughs> between these two large rock ledges. And as soon as you do, you see... Quite a few things, actually. Up ahead, you can see what looks to be two older gentlemen and a flock of sheep with them, 
a few of their dogs and also a lot of wolves. Right now, one of the wolves seems to be harassing one of the older farmers. Uh, the other one's readying his... Uh, looks like he's kind of has a quarterstaff with him. He's trying to charge in and help him. And there's quite a few of these wolves that looks like they're eyeing these sheep hungrily. Uh, you guys all have a chance to do one thing before whatever happens over there happens. What would you like to do? Oh, now I see it. In the back out. Uh... Oh. The man, needs, the man needs help. Hurry. That looks something we could cook, Baka. <laughs> ah, I'm down. And then, like, I immediately start trying to run forward. I'm not talking about the old man, just so we're clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I just keep going. Okay. All right, in that case... That's fine. If I just keep walking? Well, no, 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 you would have to... It'd be essentially one action I'm giving you right now, and then if you're wanting to intervene or help them, then we're going to go ahead and go into initiative, which sounds like that's what everyone wants to do, right? Exactly what's happening. Right. right. Okay. But... No, yeah, yeah, I'm good, actually. And yeah, let's go for it. that case, go ahead and right-click your tokens there, and then click the little shield with the cross swords icon like before, and then on your D&D Beyond sheet... Roll initiative. As we go into our first battle, we're going to try to help these farmers out. Oh! I'm real why fast. Did it, why did it go twice for me? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Whatever you rolled first. Oh, uh, I, I, I goofed. Yeah. Oh. I figured it out. And I've got quite a few on here. As well. Oh my god! <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> okay, so... Oh wow, you guys rolled First fairly fight. low. Okay. Yeah. So, a lot of stuff's gonna happen here. I'm gonna go ahead and give us some combat music first. So... Make sure you take Rick's first roll. Take Rick's first roll? Let's see. What did Rick roll first? That's his first roll. Rolled a 21, baby. Okay, we, I assume he rolled a 9 first. I'm going to go ahead and go for these wolves. So What? That's not what he rolled first. He rolled the 21. Wait, he was being, he was being serious? It was like, yes! Yeah, you're being serious. Sorry, I thought you were messing with me. Okay, all right. No! No! <laughs> Let me update this combatant to a 21. That's actually quite lucky. That puts you at the very top, Rick. Richard D. Ross. You see these mm -hmm. wolves charging in at this man's flock. Um, before you make a move, though, make a perception check for me. Gotcha. One sec. Yeah. Okay, that's that's actually very good. Uh, something strange you notice when you see these wolves lunging in. You you're familiar with wolves. You've traveled the lands a decent bit, and you know wolves tend to when they attack a target, they jump them and they go for the jugular, or they try to take them down immediately. This wolf engaged with this farm up top looks more like he's just harassing him and keeping him busy, but not actually attacking him. The other wolves in the back you can see are gunning for those sheep, though. Now you can go ahead and take your turn. Alright, um... I'm trying to think, uh... How does movement work again? I'm sorry. So every space is 5 feet, and your movement uh, should be 30 feet. So you can move... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, about six squares, or that might be five squares a turn. You can also dash, which uses your action, and that'll allow you to move 60 feet, or double your movement speed instead. But you will lose your ability to attack if you do that. Gotcha. Uh, I am just going to move... Let's see here. You also, I think, as a bard, uh, have cantrips trips that can arrange spells too, right? Mm hmm Yeah. I'm going to move... If I can unclick that. Oh, you gotta click the little person icon at the top left again. That's how you select. Yeah, it's getting stuck on the ruler. <laughs> Let's see, you're using... I got it. Oh, I did that one. 
Uh, I move uh, 30 feet, um, and I'm gonna end my turn. Okay. Or actually, no, I'm gonna yell at the old man. You guys okay? <laughs> As you yell that, uh, this old man turns to you and yells, The hell's you doing? Come help! <laughs> that's gonna be the, the end of your turn there, Rick. Yep. Uh, that's gonna take us to four wolves are gonna go in a row. Uh, which one? So, this wolf and this wolf are going to grab the sheep right next to them, and they're gonna start darting off into these woods. You already scared him, Rick. <laughs> these next two wolves, uh, the one in front of the farmer here, will continue just... It looks like he's bouncing back and forth. He could very well strike, but he's not biting him or clawing at him still. He's just sort of distracting him, it looks like. It's very, very odd behavior. Um, this wood in the back will run up to this dog, this uh, sheep hound, actually, though, and will go to bite it. And he will connect, dealing more damage, this poor doggy. This wolf just bites into this dog's throat and wounds him badly, but the dog is, uh, although it's bleeding, it's still alive for the time being. Uh, you guys can hover any of these tokens, by the way, except the sheep, and you'll see their health bars as well. So that kind of gives you an idea of how badly they've been wounded or, or stabbed or any of, that, any of that stuff. Um, that was four wolves, which will bring us to one of these dogs. Uh, this dog here is going to try to bite this wolf that came in to attack this flock. Wow. And we'll absolutely Good bite dog. this wolf really hard for five damage. Okay, hit this yeah. one of these sheep pounds is holding his own. Uh, let's see. Next up's going to be another wolf. like corgis, and I love it. Uh, corgis, imagine them being giant corgis. <laughs> They do look like corgis. Yeah! <laughs> this wolf starts running between the sheep. It looks like he's about to try and grab one as well. Um, two of these dogs are up next. Uh, this dog's going to move down here. This dog's going to move up here and try to strike this wolf taking away some of the sheep. And the other one will try to strike the wolf to the south. This is for the one up north. This is for the one down south. Uh, unfortunately, both of them are not able to get a hold of these wolves. Uh, the wolves are a little too agile for them right now. Corgis are short. Let's see who's up next. I got two more wolves, and then we finally get to almost some of y'all. Um, some friendlies. This wolf will... Yeah, the one down there is going to attack the dog that just bit at him. That is going to hit. This wolf completely mauls this dog oh. that tried to strike it. The Come dog on. stops moving. Uh, the one over, let's see. This guy over here is actually going to run past some of these other dogs and whatnot. And he is going to grab a sheep start pulling back. That'll bring us to one of the old man farmers. He's going to run up and try to bash the wolf in that just uh, attacked his uh, his dog to death there. Oh, looks like he's going to, let's see, he's going to pull out a dagger. He's going to try to stab this thing. Wow, and he stabs the crap out of it for nine damage. He almost just guts this wolf's throat in one fell swoop, but the, the wolf is still barely standing. Bakaluda! You see a skirmish of animals and a couple of men up ahead, just going to town on, on all just all sorts of activity up ahead. Well, what would you like to do? I'm gonna move forward. Why won't you let me grab? Stop it. Uh, and... Ooh, now 
now I can see everything. Oh. Uh. Opportunity. Uh, I'm gonna cast. Uh. Fireball. Firebolt. Actually, firebolt. I did Wolfie. The one that's in the middle of the sheet. Aw, oh, sheet. Yes, mark it up. This one here? Uh, no, no, no. The one that's in the middle of the you can dog hold down the sheep. If you hold down left click on something, it should hang it for you. So that way you can. Yeah? Is that not a wolf? Wait, I don't, I don't see a ping. Hold down left click on something. I... There it is. Ah, oh, there it is. That is a wolf. That's uh, the one I want to hit. Huh. Okay. For so the there's a few. There's a few things with that. So it's fireball. Your firebolt essentially is a direct line, correct? Is it? Like it's a it's a bolt. I don't you launch forward and it throws. The, the, the problem I'm seeing here is right now you have uh, a different wolf in front of you and potentially a sheep dog. So roll and an old man. Roll your firebolt one more time. Yeah, that would hit the other wolf first. Mm-hmm. Unless that's what you're aiming I... for. You aiming for that earlier wolf? No, I was aiming for the one in the back, but if I can't retcon it, sure, I'll go for it. Okay, go ahead and roll again for me. God damn it. Hold on. Uh. Alright, well. Ooh. There All you right. go. So, you line up this shot. As this wolf's engaged with this farmer, you wait till the perfect opportunity and then just launch this firebolt that slams into this wolf that had a sheep. It goes rolling to the side. It looks like you've burned the ev just ever-living life out of its side. It, it's still barely hanging on, but it lost the sheep that was in its mouth. Uh, That'll bring us it. to uh, one of these farmers who's going to take a knife out of his belt and take that, you bitch. stab the wolf right in front of him. Oh, when he hits. Five okay, damage. Yeah, you should be. You know that you actually lined up a shot between all those dudes. That was, that was pretty good. Thread the needle. Uh, one of these dogs being badly wounded up here, it's going to retreat. It's going to use the disengage action to get away from this wolf and try to stand close to the sheep and just hold uh, hold its crown. Arthur, you're up. Um, all I really can do at this point is move, so... You don't have any range? I do, but this um, boulder is in my way if I was to hit this. If I was trying to hit this wolf, the boulder's in my way. Everything's in your way. Yeah, I see. Yep. So I only can move right there, and that's pretty much what I got. Because I can't make direct line contact with the upper wolf because I got that trunk in my way. Unless you think I can make it. Yeah, that trunk, it's, it's not very high. I mean, it's it's fairly trunk. low to the ground. Like, maybe... Uh, a foot off the ground. Okay, in that case, it's only 65 feet. I think you for that baka. I like to do my famous cast of guiding bolts. Sal's all the way in the back, back here. I know, I'm supposed to be the tank. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great, bud. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Oh. Um. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So roll. Oh no. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Roll a roll a d twenty for me, Arthur. Yeah. Just a one d uh, slash roll space one d twenty. Yeah. 
How's the command go again? I'm sorry. Uh, in chat, just type slash roll space 1d20. And it should do something like that. Okay. Um, so wow. you start to launch your guiding bolt, but you stumble just a bit as you start launching it. The bolt aims towards Baco. Why didn't mine roll? Uh, because I had your token selected. Uh, oh. The bolt aims toward Bacaluna, and bef- just a hair before it's about to launch right in her face, you're <laughs> able to just stifle that energy and push it to the side as you fall prone on the ground. Oh, shit. That's very good. Very, very good time to roll a 20 for that one. <laughs> I um, almost got knocked oh the fuck God. out. You, uh, you I got your back, Baka. You used all your movement. Yeah, okay. You'll be, you'll be stuck on the ground until next round. Oh uh, my god, this new guy, guys! <laughs> Sal, you're up. What an idiot. What the heck okay. are you doing, dude? <laughs> you said I can dash for 60 feet, right? Correct. And that is in action. Uh-huh. Essentially, it'll be you move 30 feet and then use your dash action to move another 30 feet. Going to move right, right there, right, right there. Okay, that's all I can do. All right, just set it up. You guys are getting closer. Get ready to to lay into some wolves. That is going to bring us to another wolf, who is. Uh... Oh, actually, can I can I uh, roll that back just a little bit? Sure. What were you want to do? I'm going to cast Wild Shape as a bonus action. Okay, what do you turn it into? Brown bear, baby. A brown bear? Yep. Do I have a brown bear token? I don't think I do. So we're just going to turn it I sent you a your... brown bear token. Well, I sent you that in uh, Discord. It's uh, part of my list. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make the token then. But we're going to worry about that later. You're a brown bear now. Um, Pull up the stat sheet... Through, uh, oh, I'll just, I can send you a stat sheet in a minute. Go I got it. Oh, even better. Okay. Uh, is that the end of your turn? That's the end of my turn. Okay. This wolf engaged with the sheepdog over here. It's going to, um, it's going to start just harassing the sheepdog. It's going to take the dodge action and try to keep its attention. And that's all it's going to do for now. Richard D. Ross, you're up. All right. I am going to move uh, towards this space, and I'm going to cast uh, Dissonant Whispers on this guy over here. Oh, okay. Um, link Dissonant Whispers for me. Gotcha. How do I link? Uh... How do you link a spell? Should I just cast? Yeah. Uh, if you click just the empty space on the, the spells area, it'll pop up a little menu on the right. Then you can click display and BTT, and that'll show okay. the spell itself. Or you can just cast it, and that'll give us a descriptor as well. Let's see. Okay, you whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear, racking it with a terrible pain. Uh, you are within range to do this, so you, under your breath, whisper this these horrendous, just damaging words. Actually, what, what are you whispering? Let's, let, let's, let's hear that. What You're you attacking whispering? your mother. You're attacking your mother. <laughs> what? Drop her. Drop her. You're attacking your mother. You whisper that to the wolf. Mm-hmm. Well, it may or may not understand you, but either way, it's going to have to make a saving throw, right? What, oh, what I it? speak wolf. Oh, you sp- ah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. Uh, it fails its savings throw. So it's going to take, oh my, 12 psychic damage. These whispers. You see its ears perk up? Oh, you fucked it up. And immediately blood just starts pouring out of its ears as it falls <laughs> limp on the ground. Still with the sheep in its mouth, but not not gripping it anymore because uh, you you done blowed his brain up. Ah, oh, I did get the sheep out. Damn. I mean, you basically got the sheep free. It's just kind of stuck there in his mouth for a moment. Um, He's dead. Yeah, it's definitely dead. Hell yeah! Uh, which wolf was that? Was this guy? This unfortunate wolf up here. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes. 
Okay, in that case, that's going to bring us to a bunch of wolves, and you see the wolves start glancing around all at once. A lot of them looking over in your direction, ears perked up, and then almost as a unit, they begin to pull out. Uh, this wolf up here will start moving into the tree brush hastily with the sheep and mouth. He's actually going to disappear in this brush with that sheep. Um, this wolf will try to do the same thing, but since he has so many dogs around him, he is going to have to survive a bite from one of them. Oh, and it doesn't look like it's happening. Is two enough? Uh, it is. This wolf was limping away with the sheep trying to get away, but just got bit right on the leg, which was enough to take down his last good breath. Um, which wolf are you? There's so many wolves out here. There you go. Uh, the other wolves are go actually going to start just disengaging and trying to get out of here at this point. Uh, this one down here will disengage and start retreating to the south. Uh, these two will disengage to the west. This one actually makes it off the map. This one's dragging a sheep with him. And almost gets away, but not quite. Uh, this one will retreat into the tree line and vanish. This one will retreat in the tree line and vanish. And yeah, all the wolves seem to be just taking off all at once, except for one that still has a sheep in its mouth and is a bit delayed. Um, we'll go ahead and say the one wounded one of the south dashes to escape. Uh, so he's gonna have to survive another round if he wants to get away. So let's go ahead and skip to one of you guys. Bakaluda! You would be up now. All right. Get the hell out of Augie's way. <laughs> That's not, not a bad idea. Oh, here. I want to cast Magic Missile on this bit. Okay, let's see it. And you can't tell me you can't tell me that I'm line of sight because uh, a Magic Missile goes where I want it. So. Magic missile. You create three glowing darts of magical force. Each dart hits a creature of your choice that you could see within range. Dart deals 1d4. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, got it. So you're firing darts into this wolf that's far away? Yep, and I rolled a four. Okay, so you're shooting. Like four per dart, right? Yeah, you're shooting three darts, so that's just one dart's damage. That's three darts. Oh my god, I gotta try it. Okay, hold on. I gotta, I gotta roll three darts? Uh huh. Hold something good. Okay, these magical yeah, darts, horrible. they dart and whiz and zig and zag between all of these creatures on the field and this shrubbery and just pinpoint onto this wolf and stab into it for a total of nine force damage. Almost enough to take this wolf down, but it's with the last bit of its life clinging onto the sheep. Ah, shit. Well, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, in that case... We're gonna go ahead and go to the next one of you guys, which will be Arthur. Uh, um, I thought I was prone. I can't do anything this round. You can. Uh, now that it's your turn again and you're still on the ground, it's half your movement to stand up, and then you can use the rest of your movement to move or, or use an action or do both, technically. So yeah, I'll use half my movement. To stand. Okay, so you have 15 feet of movement left. That's not too bad. Yeah, I'll walk. Oops. I'll go right here. And can I make an action or no? Yeah, you still can make an action. It's 10 feet away. Uh, I'll have to end there then. Okay, you dust yourself off and uh, step up a bit, surveying the battlefield. Um, looks like most of your enemies are gone right now. Just one remaining, trying to get away with the sheep. 
Sal, you're up. Man, I can't do anything again except move. However... Do you have any rage spells? Well, I'm a bear. He oh. is currently a bear. That's right. However, brown bears have a 40-foot speed. So I'm moving right there. Alright, you move up a bit closer, trying to hone in on this, uh, my turn. <laughs> this last wolf. Um, you said that's the end of your turn? Yep. Technically, could you not sprint? He could. If you want to use his action, he could I move could. another 40 feet. You can't do any action, so might as well. Yeah, you wait. Wait, where was that? Right Behind that tree. Oh. All right, close it in on that yeah, wolf hard. It's right at the edge of a, some tree line, so it's going to be... We might get away from you in a moment, but you get as close as you can to get this thing. Are you able to do anything 10 feet out? Mm. No, i got to be in melee range. Okay. In that case, Richard D. Ross, uh, it's up to you. If you want to try to stop this thing, what would you like to do? I'm gonna move 30 feet, so I'm gonna be right next to uh, this guy right here. And I'm gonna cast uh, Phantasma Force. Phantasma Force, okay. Wow, that is a wall of text. Sum it up for us. I basically uh, can create an object uh, to mess with this guy and cause damage to him. I'm pretty sure. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that all the trees around this wolf are crumbling in and they're falling down on the wolf and he has to make a decision whether to leave the sheep behind or get crushed by the trees. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Intelligence saving throw to believe it first, right? I believe so. All right, let's see what he did. Okay, he failed. So it looks to him like... Oh, I should roll. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks to him like the trees around him are crumbling right now. So does that damage happen right now, or does it happen on its turn? Uh... uh well, that's a... <laughs> Those new spells just tried it out. Each round on your turn, the Phantasm can deal 1d6 psychic damage to the target if it's in the Phantasm's area or within five feet of it. Each round on your turn. Okay, so I guess right now it's around and it's on your turn, so I would assume that damage will go off immediately. This wolf, all of you see this wolf just kind of drop the sheep and looking up in a bit of a panic expression and just collapse on the ground. Uh, it really didn't make a lot of sense, but Rick, Rick you know what happened there. Uh, the wolf saw a bunch of branches and trees just in cave on him. He feels like he got crushed, which is enough damage to put that wolf out of its misery. And that was our last wolf. That's going to take us out of combat. Good work, team. Hey! Do I always have the wolf doing all the work? What the hell you mean? And I, like, just come and, like, waddle up to him. If it was up to you, you would have roasted the farmer next to me. How are you doing, old man? Uh, I had perfect aim. Hello, how are you doing? The farmer turns to both of you and says, Well, if you hadn't shown up, we would have maybe lost all of our sheep there. But it looks like he turns around and surveys the area and then turns back to you. One hound and one sheep ain't too bad given the circumstances. And the other farmer comes walking up, uh, actually uh, shouting a bit angrily, What do you mean it ain't worth too much? We lost two critters here! Well, it was either those critters or your lives. If I was in your shoes, I'd be ever thankful that we showed up to save your behind. He waves you off a bit and uh, says, Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm all appreciative. Yeah, you, you... You did help us, or actually, who? And he turns to his friend and says, uh, where's the, there it is. 
Erwin, who? You know the, you know these people? And, uh, this gentleman turns and looks back to the other farmer and says, uh, Earl, I haven't even, I haven't seen any of them in my whole life. And they both turn to you and say, who are you? I am Richard D. Ross. And this is my crew. We were hired to come out and investigate something weird of the wildlife in this area. And it looks like we stumbled right upon it. If you want, we'll start taking some of our payment now. Ha <laughs> ha uh, Erwin, this gentleman here, speaks up. Uh, if you're looking, looking for some type of reward, I'm sure if you head to to Welton, then they'll they'll set you up right. You helped us, so we'll give them a good word. But uh, first, uh, Merle, can you gather the the sheep up? To which uh, the other farmer, Merle. Uh, just quickly nods and starts going around and getting all the sheep back in one position. I was kidding about the reward. The pride of helping two young men like you is enough to satisfy my boots. But seriously, if you know someone in Walton, uh, point us in that way. <laughs> Rick's over here wheeling and dealing. <laughs> well, if you, you're welcome to travel with us, we were heading back to town now ourselves. And that does sound like a bad idea. I mean, we cleared out most of the wolves, but I saw a couple of them scurry off. Mm -hmm. You want lollipops? Yeah. And then, like, I just pull out like two lollipops and hand uh, one to both of them. <laughs> like, I just offer them up. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I noticed uh, some of those wolves looked a little bit strange compared to other ones. What kind of what kind of stuff do you have in the water in this park? Uh, Erwin uh, gingerly takes the lollipop from you, uh, Bakaluda, and just kind of looks at it for a moment, and then just puts it in his mouth and gives a, a kind of a, a stern nod at you, like he approves of this. Um. And as he has this lollipop in his mouth, he turns to you, he turns to you, Richard, and says, "Well, this all—it's not like this is how it's always been. This all started when, uh, what was it? Uh, a sorcerer, yeah, a sorcerer, Father, Father Merrickson's brother, upped and disappeared. Now the damn wolves have just gotten braver out of nowhere." Not, not, not that I'd hear a word against him, of course, but, you know, makes you think. They weren't always like this? He shakes his head. They've never come out this far. On the trails? I mean, they have their territory in the woods, whoever knows where that is, but... Not here, no. Hmm. I wonder what drove them out this far. And Rick just DC. Yeah. He's lagging. Are we lost He's a Rick? Lagging. Yeah, you gotta give him a second, he's lagging. Oh no! Everyone's portraits are all on everyone else's. <laughs> Can't, Hibaka Luda is now Sal. Sal is now Ricky. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, like, it was bound to happen. Oh, there we go. Like, come back. One of us was gonna DC it <laughs> at some point. I was expecting me. It's a surprise that it's not. A surprise, I was Ricky. expecting Augie. I was also expecting Augie. It was either gonna be me or Augie. I didn't expect Rick. Um, is it possible I could heal this dog? Uh, yeah. One of the dogs is limping uh, amongst the sheep. This one specifically. If you want to, you can heal it. Alright, do I have to cast anything, or can I just say I healed it? Uh, you would have to use a spell to heal it. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and use... Oh. <laughs> wow. He's trying. Give him a sec. Overheal. As you lean down and start touching this dog, uh, Merle actually kind of runs up behind you and says, hey, 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 now don't, don't, don't be messing with that. And then he sees all of its wounds just closing up right in front of him, to which he steps back a bit and says, well, oh, you're a, you're a holy man. Wow. Th thank yeah. you. Oh. I um, I slowly get up, turn around. Yeah, I might be clumsy in the battlefield, but I I do care about shit. <laughs> uh, the other uh, Irwin continues telling you, uh, Richard. Uh, he mentions uh, 
I, I mean, I don't really, I don't really know why it is the way it is, but I've, I've heard rumors. Honestly, I'd like to get back to Welton, though. If you lot would want to tag along, I can tell you what I've heard. Yeah. Lay it on us. All right. I guess, uh, I guess follow me. Let's get our things together and get out of here for more wolves just decide to randomly pounce us from north, south, east, west, up, down, underground, from every direction you can imagine. Let's just go. And he starts uh, leading the way. Immediately when he starts moving. Stop right here and roar like a bear would. <laughs> as soon as you roar, the hounds all step in your direction and freeze. And both the human <laughs> farmers turn. And Merle shouts, Oh, it's a goddamn bear! Now... Then like I start like trying to like get through these fucking sheep to get to I look like Sal's hungry again. And I like just grab like a tuft of Sal's hair and I go, Stop it! Stay. Just sit down. This hard bear. And then, like, I just kind of, like, pat him on the face. Good. good. <laughs> all the dogs start cautiously walking up to you, Sal, and just start sniffing all around you. The two farmers... <laughs> yeah, uh, he's a he's a good bear. He's a good bear. They step up and say... <laughs> you have a... You, I start kicking my leg. You have a trained bear? He's a circus uh, bear. Uh, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the dogs like him because he hasn't showered in days. I'm not sure if trained is uh, the best word. Well, just keep it under control then, okay? We don't need no accidents on the road. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. And I, like, pat Sal's side, like, shove a lollipop in his mouth. Yeah, I'm eating the, I'm eating the lollipop. Damn bear. Man, that's wild. <laughs> Literally. Almost scared uh, scared me to death there. But he nervously walks past you, Sal. Or kind of just looking you up and down. And says, uh, Okay, well, if that's... If we're alright now, just let's let's get to Welton before... Any you more things happen. No, 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 I don't want to ride him. I just... <laughs> I'll be good up here. You just keep an eye on him back there. No, that's my job. And like, I start trying to desperately climb Sal's back. <laughs> you gold for a ten-minute ride. <laughs> and Sal, you can you respond. Tell okay. you what, if both of you guys want to go on top of him at the same time, I'll make it three. <laughs> I just, I'll just lay down. And let whoever wants to ride me get on top. That's sweet. I don't know if a bear is rideable, actually, but it is. Okay. All right, well, you can, uh, yeah, yeah whoever aboard. wants to can ride the cell. <laughs> and I put a lollipop in my own mouth and then look very accomplished having climbed this big-ass bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very satisfied with myself. Very proud. Very proud. All right. Oh, so I, I must have been daydreaming a little bit. Back. I must have been daydreaming a little bit. Uh, can someone re-explain what, what, what's going on with these wolves? Uh, they're coming out of nowhere. They used to be deep in the woods, and for some reason they're, they've they been pulled all the way out here to the roads and stuff. Oh, well, I can mm. I can actually tell you quite a few odds and comings of uh, Welton and me. I don't know. Maybe you can figure something out from it, Merle says. No. Uh, I'm going to take y'all to kind of uh, just a placeholder map here, since you guys are kind of in travel mode now. Um, okay. Merle, uh, just just looking ahead while walking, and just he just starts rambling off just all these different details that's going on in town. Uh, Sorry. He, guys with your tokens, oh my god. He, what? <laughs> he says... Uh, well, the first sign, the true first sign something was out of the usual was going on came up when the the, 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 the Petersons up on Sparox Hill, they had a dozen sheep snatched from inside a barn. Their own barn. The boy got thrashed something awful for failing to close it, but a week later, 
the same exact thing happened. Even the old Peterson had locked it up himself. That don't sound like no wolf activity to me, but lo and behold, and he just motions around him to the side of the tree lines. And then there's, let's see, there's Wheatley. He sells pots, pans, and ointments here and about, and he was chased off his cart by a pack of wolves. Uh, they, they appeared from the trees. It's almost, it's almost like magic. I didn't think they could sneak so well. Almost like how they jumped us. What would they need with ointments and pots? But Wheatley? Well, that's his, that's his trail. No! The wolves! He slows down for a moment as if he hasn't actually thought of this and says, <laughs> Well, I, that's a damn good question. That's, I don't know. Maybe they wanted to eat him, but they, they didn't. They just chased him off. And he went back to the village, uh, lads, and his horses were gone as well. And three sacks of thick leather he was planning to trade. He got done dirty. Maybe, maybe they're like trained wolves. Maybe someone's leading them. You know Have these wolves actually? Was... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, how long ago was that? It couldn't have been more than I don't know, a couple days ago, maybe four days ago. Hmm. I got so, do the than... wolves actually? At... Do they actually attack humans, or are they just running away with their stuff? I think they attacked. I think they attacked one of them. Fe uh, fella named. Uh, he puts his hand on his chin for a moment. It's a halfling named uh, Feather Rock. That's right, Feather Rock. Decent shepherd too. Uh, he was hurt real bad in a fight. Uh, I think he was part of the group that went out hunting wolves, actually, to tra track them back at their den. Uh, mm. Said he was ambushed when they got to the darkest part. I mean, I wasn't there myself or whatnot, but he. Uh, he says there were sounds of booming thunder and bursts of fire and is some unholy mess. I don't know. I think he was exaggerating and just got beat real bad. But well, uh, his, uh, everyone else thought he was dead until he just showed up the next morning, dumped on Wesley's doorstep near the woods. Poor man ain't been the same since, though. He tells wild tales of voices in the night. I think he's cracked in the head from whatever happened to him. And the rest of the crew he's with has disappeared? He slows, or did he go out by himself? He slows down again and uh, thinks for a moment and says, uh, Honestly, I'm not sure. I think, I don't know what group would with him, but no one else spoke of this. I don't even know if they're in the town still. I think it would be best to visit the town then. And maybe, by chance, stay a couple of nights and see if if the attack happens again. Oh, but I got I mean, one that's more. Where we're headed right now. I got one more crazy story if y'all want to hear it. It's fine. I've told you a lot yeah. of wolf stories, though. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, okay. It's another shepherd. He actually turns around while talking. He looks a little more excited this time. And he says, uh, that old shepherd named uh, Grimstone, he's up by Carnby Way. He was watching his flock when he heard calling from the trees, begging for help. I hear someone begging, you're gonna, you know, you gotta go see what's wrong with him, right? Well, he runs off to check what's wrong, but he couldn't find so much as a gnome out there. And then while he was away, guess what? Guess what happened? And he starts pointing his finger at all of y'all, almost like he's expecting an answer. Wolf attack! I say really excitedly, and I'm like, throw my hands up. <laughs> Maybe, but we don't know. Dozens of his sheep just up and disappeared. Maybe wolf attack. That's strange. You're telling me. It's been this way for what's uh, that fellow's name? A few weeks now. Say what now? What was that fellow's name? Uh, that was Grimstone. The one who went to help the, the voice in the, that was calling for help. How many flocks? How many sheep do you guys have in your town? Uh, Welton's known as a livestock town. It's a, it's a trade center. You know, people come and come and go. <laughs> it's a uh, you know, you're, you're okay. taking the main road here. To get to most cities, you got to pass through Welton no matter what. So, business is pretty good there. So, this is actually a trading route. Well, yeah, you could call it something like that. I would like to be this Feather Rock guy. Uh, when we get into the city, do you think you could uh, direct us uh, towards him? I could point you in the right direction, no problem. You did help me after all. 
Uh, if you don't mind, Thank I'd like, like to get a drink before anything else, though. Oh, yes. And as always, drink. to celebrate this victory, I shall play us a song. Oh. Are you all ready? The best! I just kind of whimper like a bear would. <laughs> I get really excited. This one is called... I'm not going to be using any instrument this time. I'm going to be using the instrument in my voice. Oh, God. <laughs> Out of, uh... This is really old, or Wait. new wave stuff here. Coming from the underbelly. Y'all ready? I yeah. walk a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wolves are dead. Wolves are dead. Now let's get this bread. Thank you. I'm like snapping my fingers along to it. I'm like, oh, beautiful, beautiful. I just cover my face. I don't know him. I take uh, tips of all kinds, all shapes and sizes. I, I read or if you have down. any sisters or daughters, that will do as well. I lean down and I just like give Rick like two lollipops this time instead of one. This time they're not shaped like elf ears though. They just look like round lollipops. Did you say you lean uh, down? All tips besides lollipops. Yeah, I just lean. I lean down slightly. Yeah, she, like, she's riding on top of me. Oh, I'm on that's top right. Of that's right. Sal. I guess short legs, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta take rest where I can. Look, I got the kitty guys. <laughs> that's inspiration, isn't it? Yeah. Do, do you, I get are, inspiration? Are any of these? <laughs> uh, is, are any of these uh, shepherds interested in giving me a tip? <laughs> After that. Make a performance check with disadvantage. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, how do I do with disadvantage? I rolled twice, rolled. right? And you picked yeah. the lowest one? Correct. Correct. Okay, they uh, they both kind of look at you uh, a little oddly. Um, you, one of them's about to speak up, and then he gets elbowed. Uh, Merle was actually about to speak up. He gets elbowed by Erwin, and you can hear him whispering, oh, it's, it's might be a customs thing. Maybe that's normal there. And, and, and Merle, Merle looks at you and goes, uh, that's, that's not bad. That's all right. You, you did all right. Well, in celebration of this victory, I would say, how about some food? Well, I, I would love to eat once we get to town. Okay. Well, what are we waiting for? On our way now. Food's on you guys. Let's go. So you guys uh, just continuing your trek to Welton now? Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, so you guys uh, travel along this path for about a it's about a hour's journey there. Fortunately, you aren't jumped by any more wolves or any more oddities from the woods and whatnot. Um, you start to approach a town. Looks like it's on the the side of a river. Let me verify this. Yep, the side of a riverbed. A uh, fairly large little village for just a kind of a hub town in between cities here. Let me show oh, you drool. the map here. Uh -huh. uh, uh. You Don't guys you are you entering drool. in from this side right here. You guys all see that? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Um, we are going to use a... Let's see, where is she? We're going to use a little Bacaluda token to represent where you guys are in town. Yeah. So as you enter into town, um, you can notice that... Uh, first off, there seemed to be a... This is absolutely a farmlands. You, when you got closer, you passed by quite a few farms. Um, a lot of sheep in them. Uh, some pigs and some of them, so a lot of livestock around. When you get closer to town, it seems to be fairly busy outdoors right now. A lot of people walking around, a lot of wagons being driven around. This is a this is a pretty active place. What would you like to do as you walk into the town? Hmm. Well, I guess we were going for drinks. I like to look at the general the general stores, please. Yes, let's stop there first. 
Okay, um, fortunately, uh, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and say you actually have a map of this place since you were sent to check it out. It's not a hidden village or anything like that, so you're able to get this information of who lives where and what what is what, so you know exactly where the general store is. Bakaluda, I'm gonna count on you to move that token where it needs to be, okay? Ah, 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 stop, no, stop. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Mooney was knocking my hand. <laughs> okay. As, he really wants pets. As you all head to the general store, uh, Merle and Irwin kind of look at you and give a polite nod and say, well, if you want to go shopping, knock yourselves out. We will be, uh, we're going to go get some drinks. I recommend you come inside the Shepherd's Crook if you want some more information about the wolf problem, if that's what you're here for, at least. Ah, and we'll they, be there awesome. momentarily. And they both, uh, park their little small caravan outside the Shepherd's Crook and head on in. Uh, so I'm kind of curious. And try to find girls. <laughs> How are people reacting to me driving this big-ass bear into town? Well, it's been, it's been an hour, so I'm <laughs> so not I'm a just, bear like, anymore. on your shoulders now? Yeah. <laughs> you can put me down now. Alright. <laughs> like, lift you up by the <laughs> armpits and <laughs> yeah, just like a little kid. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, hey, Sal, do the bear thing again. Actually, yeah, no, never mind. You're good. Not in okay. town. Okay, you guys go into the general store? Yep. yep. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, all of you enter into this small, quaint general store. This seems to be, um, looks like a older lady, older halfling lady behind the counter. Um, she's about, it looks like she's about human height, but you can assume she's probably standing on something behind the counter. As you all walk in, she says, uh, welcome, welcome, um, outsiders you look like, huh? Uh, what can I get you? One second, um, I grab the crew next to me, and I start whispering, I can trick this old hag into getting us anything we want. Let me do the talking, is there anything we specifically need? Or should I ask what she has first? Need or want? <laughs> Both. You could probably see what she has first. That's probably a good idea. Excuse my uh, rudeness, madam. And I kind of give her a wink as I throw it up, up to her. <laughs> uh, we're new in town. Uh, what do you sell? Well, if I'm being honest, nothing really an adventurer like yourself would probably want. Even food's hard to come by now, but... Uh, basic traveling gear. You need some rope, maybe some tools. I can set you up with that. Hmm. I'm going to ask her if she has any tobacco. Uh, do you have any tobacco? Well, I do happen to sell some tobacco. Is that what you want? How much you want? I want a pouch of tobacco. Uh, how much, uh, for a couple pouches? Uh, if you're looking for two pouches of tobacco, and she uh, pulls out this ledger from behind the, her counter and starts stumming through it. Let's see, tobacco, tobacco, uh, dang it, what was that going, oh, here it is, tobacco, uh, it's two silver a pouch. It's not bad. Hell yeah. I want a pouch. How much, uh, what kind of food are you selling? Uh, well, unfortunately, I can't really offer much food right now. It's, uh, it's gotten a bit scarce. Since the, since the, uh, wolf attacks? She looks down at you and nods. It, everyone's afraid right now, so there's just not a lot of livestock business being done. Everyone's keeping to themselves just trying to protect what they got instead of trading and bartering and whatnot. There's a bunch of folks coming through selling other things, like uh, the tobacco you're buying, but uh, no, food's, a, food's a bit of a worry right now. Well, hopefully we're here kinda, to fix it. What kind of tools do you have? Well, I don't, I don't reckon you're going mining anytime soon, but I got some pickaxes, I got some, some, some pittens, I got some, a tent, uh... What else Ooh, do we have? Oh, how much for the tent? She starts thumbing through her ledger again. Oh, you're interested in the tent? Let's yeah. see. Yeah. One tent to fit. Uh, how many? Yeah. How many people do you want in it? You want to be able to hold four people, two people? 
four. Uh, four is five gold. Um, am I able to uh, cast Charm Person on her? Uh, you can cast anything you want. Just make sure to read oh. the spell before you do anything. So, can you? Look oh at wait. My, can you look at my currency sheet real fast? I'm just making sure I'm reading this right. Sure. I got fourteen gold and four silver. That is correct. Okay. It you just looks weird bitch. to me. How much does a uh, tent like that weigh? Mm. Um, a four-person tent would weigh about forty pounds. So look, if we all chipped in. Well, to... let me let me try talking her down. Sorry. Five. Five gold. Mm -hmm. I'll pay for miss. This. Um. I don't think you know yeah. who you're dealing with, as Hold I on. say, kind of smirking with her. We're a famous bunch, and we'll something there. would do, you know, have you ever heard of uh, promoting something as an advertisement in order to gain business? As I stumble up close to her and I mess around my hair. <laughs> so we're, we're a little bit of famous adventurers. I know we're relatively new to the area, but... I think your business would uh, take a boom if uh, folks and other ventures saw us using your tent. I could write a little something on the side so people know we got it at your store because you sell fine tents here. Um, I I think we do all right enough without advertisement. Um, what what did you? But have imagine in mind? how much. You know you. Give us the tent for fifty percent off, two gold and fifty silver, or whatever the, the half of gold is. And uh, we advertise your tent. People ask us, "Hey, Richard, where'd you get that tent from?" Well, I got it from this great store in Wetton. When I'm at my shows, I will talk about your tent, how great it was, how the girls flock to it every night after my performances, and. You throw in two leaves of tobacco, I'll make sure every adventure on this side of whatever river we're on knows about your tents. Make a persuasion check. Ah! You little shit! <laughs> Sorry. Damn, Vodka, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, my cat, my cat just clawed me. It went after my headset. I can't do it. She looks at you with a, an expression of, of worry, like she's heavily considering what you're saying, and says, I, Look, I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't take the risk right now. Not knowing if, if folks are going to be in here buying anything soon because of the, the food crisis. I, I don't know, it's just too risky, I'm sorry. Alright, let me, let me get a crack at this, okay, Rick? Go for it. All right, so I come up to the table. First question, ma'am, do you have any holy re relics in here? I might be blind. I'm, I can't, I can't find anything yet. I can't. Um, no, I'm afraid we don't carry any uh, relics of any sort. All right. Um, in that case, my second question: Is there anything that you need that we can get for you? Well, if you Maybe can, by chance. If you can solve the food crisis, I, we need that more than anything. Food, food crisis? crisis? We have a chef with us. Hi! As she looks down at you again, Bakaluda, and says, Well, um, I hope you get to put your skills to use soon. There's just... Uh, it's, it just might be bad soon here, so... If you really want to shine, you may want to find another place to do it at. She looks really sad when she says that. Uh, seeing that she's, like, really sad, like, I pull out, uh, a lollipop and I give it to her. <laughs> she, uh, takes the strange stick and, and says, uh, uh, what, what is this? It's food. It's a hard ball on a stick. Yeah, you suck on it. She puts <laughs> it in her mouth and her eyes light up a little bit. She says, 
Oh, oh, I know what this is. They make something like this in Waterdeep, too. I've had one of these oh. since I was young. And she uh, happily puts it in her mouth. Throw that tent. Hmm? Oh, right, right, the tent. Uh, are you are you still interested? I think we are. Tell you what, yeah. give us the receipt. How much for how much for some rope as well? Uh, rope. You want? And with the the lollipop in her mouth, she starts thumbing through her book again. Let's see. It comes in. Uh, I think the length is fifty feet. Um, I can get it to you for, uh, one gold for that link. Tell me what. Final offer on the table right here. <laughs> you get our advertisement. <laughs> and for five gold, we get the tent, two batches of tobacco, a rope, and a high five. <laughs> Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. <laughs> Oh my. Well. Wow. She um she thinks hard again for just a moment and looks at you all. And then kind of asks uh, as a group, uh, all of you at once. Are are you here to help with the the wolf problem? Absolutely. Indeed and maybe put some on the way. I look down at Baka. I just grin. All right. All right, you know what, then? If you're going to help us, then why not I start out first, then? You got a deal there, sir. I hand her five gold. And she takes the five gold, and uh, it's a little difficult for her. She goes uh, in her back room. You hear her struggling a little bit, and then she comes back, just towering over her, her walking very slowly with this wrapped up huge tent as she just stumbles a bit and sets it on the table in front of her. And, and then she reaches under her uh, counter there and pulls out two small sacks as well and sets them on the uh, table and says, Whew. we had that, that tent here for a while, but I suppose it'll get good use now. Um, thank you for your business. And please, if you can help us, we would be in your depth for you for way more than just this. Well, we already have a great track record. We already saved one flock of sheep and a couple of shepherds, so. Rick, the way that would be tracked, by the way, you need to add two regular tents to your inventory, okay? It'll total up to 40 pounds. Gotcha. Um, and the rope. Oh yeah, four and, for four. And she uh, she sets the rope up there as well. I forgot about that. I give the uh, the tobacco to Sal. Hell yeah! And I whisper in your ear, "You owe me for this, bud." Oh. <laughs> I said I would pay. Um, okay. And so I have I've carried a bunch of tents now. <laughs> um, Ricky don't you worry. You're dealing with, with professionals. Oh, as I give her the high five to uh, end the deal. I give her one or more lollipop. <laughs> I give her one more lollipop as well. <laughs> she looks at your hand for a moment, Ricky, and uh, she doesn't really know what to do, so she just kind of mimics you and just holds her hand up, too. <laughs> and that, my lady, will be the time you remember you dealt with Richard the Ross. And I storm out. Oh, by the way, what's the name of your stop at, uh, shop as I run out of the store? Uh, it's just Welton General. Welton General. And I'm, like, running off in the distance. Everyone will hear of this store. <laughs> so you, I'm not really running because I'm struggling to carry the tent. You exit with a four-person tent, 50 feet of hemp and rope, and a bag of tobacco. Um, so... You are very likely going to be extremely encumbered, seeing as you have no effective way to carry this tent currently. Mm -hmm. We did not think this through. So as long as just, <laughs> just add it to your inventory, and we'll we'll deal with it as we go. Oh, I got a plan. I got a plan for it. Don't you worry. All right. Oh, the ropes ten pounds. Uh, ten feet of hemp and, or fifty feet of hemp and rope is ten pounds. That's correct. Cool. Someone's gonna 
He just takes them this put off of me. I can I can carry one of those ropes for you, Rick. Uh, you can tear. Uh, Augie, take the rope then. All right. I'm gonna take a pinch of tobacco and load my pipe up and start puffing away on it. I guess we all walked out. Wait to next, boys. Actually, hold on. I'm still in there. I want to ask oh. the. Uh, by chance, do you have any? Um, We're still inside. Yeah. Is it? Do you by chance have any uh, pen, pen and quilts, and something to write on? Uh, I have quill and ink. Uh, are you looking to buy some? Yes, please. All right, uh, uh, just a moment. Hold on. She starts digging under her counter again. Let's see. Quill and ink. Quill and ink. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, yes, she sets out one vial of ink and a rather fine-looking uh, quill uh, right next to it. She says, Very nice. She says, uh, uh, two silver if you want the set. All right. Deal. Okay. You hand two silver I'm, over on the desk, and uh, she pushes the quill and ink towards you. Thank you. And I walk out with the rest. There we go. Uh, when you guys get outside, um, same view as before. There's still quite a few wagons and, and bustling around the town. Uh, something else you notice, however, you see quite a few people just kind of idling around in town as well. A lot of folks seem to have a slight worried expression on their, their faces. You can see a, a majority of the population here seem to be human. There is a sizable amount of halflings as well as a few dwarves around this area as well. Um, overall, it looks like this would be, again, a really pleasant place if it wasn't for the, the amount of worry or the, the tension in the air you could feel. Well, I guess we should make our way over to the bar. Which is yeah, what was the name of it again? Crook. The Shepherd's Crook. And then I just kind of like start wandering and... Uh, yeah, we have we have drinks and beer, or drinks and bread waiting for us, boys. <laughs> I think this is it. Get this man a puppers. Uh, and then I just walk in. I just hope everybody's following me. Yeah, I'm following. Okay. I'm right behind you guys. Before you guys go inside, we are going to take a quick break. We're going to take oh. like, uh, like a 10 minute break real quick, get some drinks and whatnot. We will be back soon. Um, yeah, about 10 minutes sounds good. See y'all soon. Cool. Bye. Cool. Okay, we are... Oh, nope, I'm still talking.
Um, Breakfast DC. There we go. Hello, everybody. Oh my god. What are you talking about? <laughs> Never mind. Thanks, what are you talking me. about? I'm here. You lagged out, right? <laughs> I know the camera lagged out. I just had to restart it. <laughs> Thanks for. Oh, you saw the cat walk by, right? Inspiration. I'm afraid the cat doesn't give inspiration. You know what? Maybe, <laughs> maybe it should, but that cat will walk past way too much. I don't think, I don't think what we'll the hell? I got Just toys on the ground. The cat. I didn't get inspiration for having Mooney. Yeah, you're right. That's Sour right. No, you're right. No, I, no one should get it. I agree. We'll just we'll just not do what? that. I completely agree. So you guys are walk inside <laughs> of the shepherd's <laughs> crook, and you are met with the sight of inside of a large, large tavern. Let me take you inside there. Inspiration, please. Oh, and you She's guys cute. can't see anything <laughs> right now. That's because nope. y'all don't exist there. There you go. Good. There you go. And oh, God. there you go. You guys are all outside the door. I'll let y'all walk in yourselves. I just tried clicking it on the fucking stream. Excuse my <laughs> language, sorry. Whoa, hey. <laughs> you got, oh, that's okay. You can cuss on here. It's not. It's all good. Uh, you guys all walk into the Shepherd's Crook, and there looks to be a medium-sized crowd here. A lot of room for more people. Not a whole lot in here right now. You see a party to your left as you walk in, just talking amongst each other. They kind of glance up at you as you walk in. You see Merle and Irwin sitting at the bar right now, having some drinks already. A um, couple more gentlemen to the side, and uh, a woman sitting by herself to the far right. All right, I'm attempting to sit in this chair. Okay. I'm gonna try and climb up it. You can you, you do that without much issue. I walk in. I see the guys. I'm like, get those drinks ready. But then my eyes uh, dart over to the lady in the corner, and I sprint over. <laughs> oh my yes. And there he goes. I'm gonna sit next to. Uh, and I just I Merle. just look at yeah I just look at R1 and I just go. Eh, eh, eh. I'll sit right here. Okay, so the lady, a couple of you sit at the bar. <laughs> um, as the bartender's walking up, looks like she's about to take your drinks. But let's cover let's cover what Richard D. Ross is doing first. You walk up to this young woman sitting at the bar. She seems to be just sipping on a, a cup of uh, some type of dark liquid. Could be ale, could be tea. You're not sure. But uh, you walk up and uh, say, "You said, lady." How are you doing, miss? She darts her eyes over towards you and just kind of looks you up and down and uh, lowers her cup and says, Um, hello. How can I help you? I'm curious to see what you're drinking. It looks good. Well, just a bit of tea at the moment. Hey, boys! Throw a tea in that beer order. Sorry about that. Mind if I sit down next to you? Um, if you wish. Did you come in with the others? And she motions to the rest of the group at the bar. Yes, uh, that is my crew. You've probably heard of me before. My name is Richard D. Ross, and yourself? Uh, my name is Mary. Mary, that's a beautiful name. Well, th thank you, I suppose. So, what is a, a fine young lady like you doing here by herself? Oh, I'm actually uh, waiting on my husband right now. He's in the council room having a meeting as she motions behind her. Hmm. Husband. <laughs> I don't see a ring, though. Are you guys uh, newly? What? Uh, we've been married for about maybe four years now. Hmm. So what does uh, this husband of yours do? Well, he's um, a member of the council. He's um, a shepherd like many others here, and right now they're discussing what to do about the wolf issue plaguing the town. How big is he? Not too tall. He's actually uh, about half your size, I'd say. Hmm. <laughs> Probably half my size in more ways than one. Well, miss, I will give you a song. And I will sing it after I get my drink, and it'll be dedicated to you. And if you want to meet up later, let me know. And I waddle back to the bar. Uh, during all of that, uh, this dwarf with red fiery hair walks up 
to the the bar where you're all sitting down. Erwin and Merle kind of look at you and they they give quick greetings as well. And uh, the dwarf woman says, "I I welcome welcome to the Shepherd's Crook. I can get you a drink, I." Uh, yeah. What what do you got? Well, I've got ale, I've got stouts, I've got wines, um, I've got food if you really want it, but I'm charging a premium. Be warned. Premium? Is it because of the shortage? Uh, not necessarily a shortage yet, but uh, a fear of it. If the wolf plague doesn't stop soon, uh, we'll use, lose access to a lot of our livestock, and, well, food will be... Import only. Well, you're in luck. We're here to fix that. She, uh, her eyes go wide when you say that. She says, Oh, you, you're, you're an adventurer group, are you? Hi. Oh, well, don't be wasting time here. You, over, and she motions, uh, almost, um, haphazardly to her left side, or which would be to the east for you guys, the northeast, where you can see a door. She says, they're having a meeting about it right now. Go, They, they won't mind. Go interrupt them. Go tell them what you're here for. Uh, 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 and I, like, hastily get off the stool, and I'm just like, <laughs> all right, all right. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We were promised you... drinks and food. Gentlemen, I've let us rest, and we'll then we'll before. talk. Wait, Baka, what did she say? They're having a meeting right now. The meeting? Baka, the meeting can right? wait. Let's eat. I want to know the meeting! The red dwarf chuckles. Fine, go to the meeting. Chuckles you, a you bit. You eat, I'll fill you in. And then I, I, like, can I, like, just, should I knock on the door? I, I knock on the door a little bit, and then I just kind of barge in. All right, you knock on the door and walk in. Uh, as you're going in... Uh, the dwarf looks at you and then back at the other two sitting at the counter and just chuckles to herself and says, Oh, I see. So so half of your group cares about our town's problems and the other half uh, will do it at their leisure. I see. I understand. All right. Well, what can I get you then, sir? Throwing <laughs> under the bus. I can't get through the door, by the way. It's collision. Well, you're kind of like we'll take uh, we'll take uh, four of your finest lamb chops. Uh, Merle and Irwin kind of look at you uh, for a moment and say, "Oh, we we can get you a basic, you know, bread bread and cheese, but no, I can't I can't do uh, uh, lamb chops or anything." I guess uh, bread and cheese would suffice uh, to us saving your buns, but okay. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, Leander, if you don't mind, please, uh, four bread and cheeses, and I uh, do ales all for them, too, please. Um, and a green tea. Merle says dejectedly, and a green <laughs> tea. Um, what, you want leafy tea? Leander laughs to herself and uh, says, well, you know the price then, Merle, so go ahead and pay up. To which Merle takes out a large chunk of coin. Uh, it looks like the entire coin pouch he was carrying damn near and sets it on the table. Uh, oh my god, Rick. To which Leander takes it and still laughing to herself is, <laughs> the ironic thing was if they truly were here to help and talk to the council, I would have given them free food. <laughs> she walks back to her table and starts preparing. I'm already inside by the time they said all that, by the way. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You walk inside the council room, and immediately as you enter in, you, uh, you hear shouting. Uh, let me see. Uh, it looks like the halfling up here, this guy, is currently engaged in a shouting match with, where is he? This guy. As the halfling's yelling, Listen, I... We, something has to be done, and it has to be done now. And we have to take dire measures, or else we're going to lose everything. Uh, and he, he's just, it looks he's just laying into this old man. Uh, but as you guys walk in, they all pause. And uh, the one who is shouting says, Oh, look, more uninvited guests. What do you want? Ah, we were very much invited. We're actually here to help the cause of the town actually 
I'm gonna take out a lollipop and I stick it in my mouth. You're, <laughs> you're here to, you're here to help. You're yeah, here to help yeah. with the wolf problem. Excellent. Ah, you well, see. Well, we already helped a little bit. Father Merrickson, we won't have to export anything now. We can keep everything here, plain and simple. <laughs> he hops off of his stool and uh, waddles over to you all. Uh, I'm I'm Tilius, uh, a pleasure adventurous. Just the two of you. Now there's would... two others out there. They're getting drunk can, though. Can we hear this conversation out here? You definitely can. Now the door's open. All right, hearing this, I'll walk in too. Tilius? How do you spell that? T-I-L-L-U-S. Oh. Or Tillis, I guess. I thought I could highlight over the icons and show the names, but I guess it doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Only on certain things. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, we've already helped a couple of, uh, of, uh, shepherds. Uh, Erwin and, and, was it Merle? I never heard, like, you say the name, like, Merle. Outright. Merle. I think Merle, Merle is what I got. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. Hold on, I step out. Hey, what were you two names again? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Merle, and this, this is Erwin. Okay, thank you. Merle and er that Erwin. That's weird. Merlin. That was weird. He is a little slow, that one, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw them get attacked on the side of the road, and we killed quite a few wolves. And ran some off. Sadly, lost one sheep and one dog. I see, I see. Well, we were just having a discussion about exporting what we have left. He turns around and looks at uh, Father Merrickson, the old man here, who was looking down... Uh, not angrily, almost. More like disappointed. And then uh, Tillis turns back to you all and says, "But uh, now, that, now that you're here to help, um, yeah, we can offer a reward if you solve this crisis. If it is the wolves or whatever's causing it, uh, I believe 800 gold was at stake. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't know that much. <laughs> How can you throw in a free meal? I'm not. Wait, is the door well. open right now? Uh, I think Arthur closed the door, but you can definitely hear uh, yelling, excited yelling, actually, but you can't make out what the words are. Uh, uh, how are the drinks almost on their way over? Actually, yeah, that's, that's what I was about to say next. Uh, the f dwarven lady comes back with a couple trees plates in one arm and two drinks in the other and sets them out across the table and says, I, I, here's half of it. I'll get the other half for you. I uh, throw a piece of silver on the table say thank you very much and i grab a drink i grab a beer and a the tea and i scurvy over to mary and i'm like here's your tea now let me go deal with your husband and i uh, start <laughs> storming in you enter into a did my ears yeah, leave me or did i hear 800 gold <laughs> uh tillis looks up at you and says uh, another one um Yes, if you're if you're with them, eight hundred gold was the promise. Deal with our wolf issue, and you will be handsomely rewarded. Eight hundred gold each. A free meal? No. Uh, eight hundred gold together. Eight hundred gold each. Do you think this is a castle? Yeah. Are you insane? <laughs> I kid. I kid. Okay. So, well, I'm sure yeah. you've already informed my uh, my underlings about your plan. Uh, let us rest up. Uh, help us pay for this meal by giving Erwin some cash back, and we'll deal with your wolf problem. Uh, the halfling sitting over here uh, that hasn't said anything that turns to you and, uh, well, he's been watching the whole time, but he says, You'll perhaps want more details on what we know so far before you set out. Yes? yes. Leave yeah, that to me. Straight into give it. me the details. Don't worry about him. Give me the details. <laughs> he's the front man. Uh, very well. I'm sorry, I I do apologize, but can you introduce the rest of the group here? Oh, of, of course, of course. Um, my name is Coral. I'm a tracker and hunter. Uh, you already met Tillis. He's our, he's the head of the council. Um, 
well-known shepherd. And Tillis kind of beams, smiling when he says that, almost in a in a cocky, smug way. No. Right, Stacey, we'll be back. Coral then motions to the old man over here and says, uh, "This is Father Merrickson, the the town priest." And then we have uh, Ben and Jack, two other well-renowned shepherds of town, uh, the more wealthy ones. Together we make up the Council of Welton. A pleasure. A pleasure to meet you all. I'm so sorry. I missed all of that. Could you just go over the names one more time? Just my, quick. My camera's no. Um, camera's Rick, Rick, yeah, sorry. When Rick shows back up. This is Till- Rick completely be seated. This is Tillis. This is Coral. Got it. This is Father Merrickson. This is Ben. This is Jack. So Ben and Jack are the two wealthy shepherds. Mm-hmm. Poor Rick with his internets. I thought for sure he wouldn't be the internet guy tonight, but he is. Just say it. He's he, Mr. Internet. He right. never DCs, so this is like real weird. This is our artistic camera setup. Okay. I'm gonna make an <laughs> NFT of this camera setup. Avant garde. Abstract. But we can we can keep going while we while we wait on pop back. Oh wait, or he's, he's trying to pop back in right now. He's trying, right. he's trying. Okay. I think he's like constantly lagging out right now. Okay, well we'll just we'll proceed. We'll fill him in with what he was. Yeah. So uh Tillis says I already have some info. Uh Tillis and says, I'm sure you do, and your your view can handle it from here. The rewards out there, handle it when you can. As soon as possible. And then he just goes and sits back down. Well, I was trying to get a little bit more detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could Sorry, I'll, uh, with that. Marrying my glass of water. <laughs> yeah, your internet's been been janky. Um, yeah, I don't know. it's never like this. I don't know what the heck's going on. Yeah, I know. They uh, all the all the uh, council just introduced themselves. Basically, you have Coral, Father Merrickson, Tillis, Ben, and Jack. And uh, Tillis basically just said, "You know, okay, here's the, I promised your award. Deal with it," and just kind of walked away. Uh, Coral, uh, Coral what the- walks up to you, Bakamas, and says, uh, Yes, yes, my name is Coral. I can offer you what information I can, or help however I can. I've heard some pretty crazy tales of uh, what has been happening here, and it's just not adding up. Like, do y'all have any idea what drove the wolves and the attacks out in the first place? No, we, we truly don't. It's been a string of odd coincidences, but it doesn't make sense to why the wolves would attack after any of it. Um, we've tried to handle the issue ourselves as well. We actually sent a scouting party to hunt them down already, but they were attacked in the woods and driven back. That, happen- how- that didn't happen to be the same uh, scouting party as Feather Rock. He uh, looks up at you and says, Feather Rock was indeed part of that group. Um, and he was the only one to return, correct? Yes. Honestly, we would have sent Alexi as well, but he's started missing as soon as the attacks began. Alexi? Aye, a uh, sorcerer. He was the town guardian. Hmm. And he's been gone ever since the attacks started happening. He nods. Where is Alex from? Has he always grew up here? Or is he relatively new? What's his story? Um, Father Merrickson stands up from his chair and lets out a long sigh and says, He's my son. Plot twist. You don't seem too enthusiastic about that. Might I ponder why? I haven't seen him in... I don't know. A few weeks now, he's been missing, and I... I don't want to jump to conclusions, but... His absence saddens me, and these attacks sadden me, and they come hand in hand. It's hard to say they aren't related. And he looks dejectedly towards the ground. 
Uh, well, we'll find. We'll see if we can find out what happened to your son, or where he's at, or if we can aid him and find him in any way. From how these wolves have been attacking and stuff, it doesn't seem like they're very aggressive. So I'm very curious as to why your scouting party was <laughs> vanquished. I T guess or not vanquished. But it interrupts you from across the room and yells. Not aggressive! They've taken our livestock, our sheep, our pigs, our chickens! They've attacked our hounds! They've killed and maimed! Not aggressive, you say! I meant towards people. I meant no offense. Well, go explain that to Featherrock. He's upstairs. I'm sure he'd like to hear it. He is one of the people I would love to talk to. Tilla sits back with his arms crossed, just just almost like a, uh, he just gave a stern talking to like it was the right thing to do. He looks very accomplished. <laughs> with that being said, uh, Father, more about your son. Uh, what school of uh, sorcery did he study under? Uh, none. He wasn't uh, a wizard, necessarily. He was a sorcerer. Something, I don't know if it's our bloodline or what, but... His abilities just awoken one day. He honed them, trained what he had. What what kind of abilities? He had the ability to use fire, to manipulate terrain, to... Uh, he, was, he was a gifted boy. And, and the father actually looks away, and it looks like he's tearing up a little bit now. I'm sorry, father. Uh, that, I must push you. The more information, the faster your son will come back to us. Right, right. He... I believe he was proficient with nature magic as well. That's all I know. Has he ever dealt with any wolves before this matter? Not to my knowledge. And before the attack started, have you noticed anything uh, different about your son? Not accusing him of anything, of course, just just trying to get some knowledge to see because someone with that kind of ability might have some kind of foresight about the situation. He, well, he was appointed guardian of Welton. He would traverse the town edges all the way out to the, the deepest farms near the forest edge itself. And he... He would always return, like normal, until he didn't. Have the wolves only attacked the edges of town, or have they actually come into? Uh, Coral speaks up before uh, Father Merrickson can answer this one and says, uh, the, the wolves have mostly attacked the various farms outlying town. No nothing has set foot within Welton. So they're attacking the outskirts. Yeah, basically your weakest point. There, fallen. What's interesting? Oh, go ahead. Uh, what's interesting, fellas and father? Thank you so much for sharing that info. Uh, I'm sure a, a, a son of your quality, with his uh, abilities, is still out there, and we'll find him. But nevertheless, uh, we heard that these wolves were not even really attacking livestock, so to say, but were actually running away with. Goods such as pots and pans and leather and other kind of tools and supplies. Have, has that uh, been confirmed by you folks as well? Coral starts to speak, but is interrupted by boisterous laughter from the back of the room as Tillis yells, We've heard rumors of such. Perhaps they're getting ready to cook a meal amongst themselves. <laughs> Why is this relevant? I stand my I stand or I stamper my feet against the floor and I look kind of pissed off. There are all kinds of magical beings and creatures out there. Any kind of information's relevant. Do you want your town saved or do you want to sit here drinking like a fool? Go get off your high <laughs> rock like you'd care if we weren't offering eight hundred gold. Hey, eight hundred gold will make me do a lot of things and save your town as one of them. Well, we did come here before we actually knew what the reward price was. Mm. Well, ask away. And we were willing to help before we knew what the reward price was. 
and Coral intervenes again and says, and, and we're, we're very grateful for that. Please, if uh, if you have any more questions. Not the split ends, but every piece of information is vital, no matter how silly it may seem. Is there anything odd, any other odd things that have happened? Uh, anything out of the ordinary? Besides just, you know, them taking livestock. Just rumors. Rumors of a shepherd trying to help what sounded like an injured woman in the woods, only to find nothing in return to his livestock gone. A shepherd who locked his barn up, locked his barn, to find the lock tampered with and his livestock gone, and just oddities. But Featherrock may be the best person to ask for a first-hand account. These uh, shepherds who've had their uh, livestock attacked, do they happen to be all in the same place, or are they scattered throughout the town? Scattered. uh, On the outskirts of the town. Outskirts versus the... the... Is the outskirts covered by... I didn't actually look at the map. This is just a question for me. Is the outskirts covered by wood? So, I don't have a map to show you specifically of that, but I can try to explain it as best I can. So, essentially, Welton right now is right next to a river, and it's fairly open a fairly open area, very few trees. Uh, just to the north of town, about an hour out, is a small thicket of, of wood. That's where you guys en- encountered that actual uh, wolf ambush. And then far to the west and northwest is a deep forest. Um, everything else near Welton is actually mostly plains and farmland. Wait, so they're getting attacked on the from the plains? Mm-hmm. Okay. Have um, since the attack started, um, even beforehand, have you guys been missing? Any townsfolks who just happen to just disappear? Um. Any suspicious people coming through either? Not to my knowledge, no. Um, the group Featherrock came, went with, uh, they all came back alive. Uh, Featherrock was badly wounded, and he did not come back with the, the rest of his team. They arrived way before him and said he was lost. I thought Featherrock, maybe I misheard, but I thought Featherrock was the only survivor of that group. No, the others survived as well. They, and he rolls his eyes a bit and sighs, uh, they fled when things got heated. Were they townsfolk or were they uh, hired guards of some sort? I believe they were mercenaries. And if you, I'd say you could talk to them yourself, but they've already left town. You said Featherrock is upstairs? Aye, uh, resting right now. I'm sure he wouldn't Sounds mind like some visitors. Sounds like we need to speak to Featherrock. Well... Ask if we could go up there and talk to him. Let that man rest for now. Let us rest, get our bearings, and we can question him uh, once we got ourselves together. I mean, Unless one better. of you guys want to go upstairs. I'll, I'll go talk I have a beer calling call. my name. If y'all can secure the rooms, I'll go, I'll go talk to Kevin. I just, I look at Ben and Jack. They've been awfully quiet this whole entire time. Uh, they sort of are just sitting there nonchalant, just kind of listening and taking everything in. Do you, do you... Well, can we get a location? We'll get rid of... Like, can we get a location of the farms that have been hit? Like, I know that there's multiple ones, but, like, could we go... I'd like to talk to the owners. Well, the the farthest farm out is the one almost near the edge of the woods to the west. That would be the Wesley farm, I believe. Wesley, why do I know that name? Is it Wesley or Wheatley? Uh, Westley. Two different people. Um, I'm not familiar with a Wheatley. Oh, well, I thought you said Wheatley earlier. He did say Wheatley earlier. Are you talking? Are you talking to DM or Coral right now? I'm talking, I'm talking to, to you. Right now. I did say Wheatley earlier. 
Okay. Okay, so Wheeling and West is two different. That's what we were trying to ask from the end. West. And which uh, direction is that in? His farm is to the northwest, outside of town. Oh, I would have guessed to the west. <laughs> There's a trail you can actually take if you exit out the town to the south. Uh, eventually it forks uh, north and west. If you take the northern route at that point, it should take you straight to his farm. Is there anyone in town that needs help right now? Well, honestly, uh, we all do. Um, we're not hurting for food necessarily, but we're on the path to it. And everyone's afraid, and fear... Fear can change a whole town, town in a one fell swoop. People pack up their things, they leave, business dwindles, the town starts to die. And the best help you could do is solve whatever the hells is happening here as soon as possible. Well, Rick... Maybe if we could put it on a performance to boost um, morale. You read my uh, thoughts exactly. Gentlemen, <laughs> let's turn those frowns upside down. Let's relax. Your help is here. Let's enjoy ourselves. And we'll tackle this first thing tomorrow. Uh... What time of the day is it uh, anyway, Jamie? Uh, you guys made it to town around 12 after that extra hour of travel. Um, I'd say the amount of time you spent here shopping and just hanging out in this place, maybe about an hour and a half. So it's about, about we'll say two o'clock. Two oh, o'clock wow. in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to, uh, Mr. Featherstone or Featherrock. I'm sorry. Featherrock. I wish to remain town, talk you. to the talk to the travelers thank you for your time and the info and uh we will get this problem all solved and taken care of hey hey jamie uh quick and thing. i give like um, a i lost heart, in... uh, like a what was that you go back i'm sorry no i was just saying give like a little thumbs up and like <laughs> and then i, I uh, jamie turn to walk out What's up, Richard? I lost connection to the board. Oh, you don't see the board at all? I got you. Watch this. Wait, hold up. Am oh. I back in there? Can you see now? All right, I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. Be back. Right. And then uh, I give him one more wave and then, like, walk out. All right. I'm surprised you didn't give them a lollipop. <laughs> now nah, they don't need it. Oh, <laughs> uh, calls out. Uh, if you need anything else, please... Uh, don't hesitate to interrupt us. It's, honestly, it's a boon to not have to deal with some of these people. <laughs> Any, I come back up. Anything to do. I want to make sure that this place is well pristine when we leave. Oh, well, right now, Feather Rock uh, could use a bit of assistance. He's not well. After whatever happened to him, he just something's not right with him. <laughs> Arthur, come with me then. Let's go. Let's go check on Feather Rock. I'm gonna go check on Feather Rock with you. Those are those guys are gonna put on the show for the townsfolk. Merry waves as you all pass, show. and you all notice uh, uh, plates of bread and cheese better. and ales just lined up on the counter with no one sitting at them right now. Oh. Oh uh, shit! Look at that. I'm gonna grab a nail real quick. Yeah. Yeah. No, same I here. Totally, <laughs> totally grab that food. Hold on. Hey, thanks, Richard. Hey, they should be paying those gentlemen back and some after we're done with all this mess. They say Featherwalk was upstairs or outside? How much Up is upstairs. they paying for that? A lot. Uh, you don't know specifically. He handed over essentially his entire pouch of whatever coins he was carrying. Oh my god. Why would you do that, Richard? <laughs> you broke the I got a guys. plan. <laughs> A I, a I give a I give a couple of nods to the guys as we as I walk by, and I go walk upstairs. Okay, you all start to head upstairs. Richard, what are you doing? I come next to Mary, and I'd be like, "Husband, 
Nice fella, a little short though. And I walk by her, and I go grab a piece of bread and cheese, and I'm like, I go up to the guys, the shepherds, like, you guys ready for some kind of performance? Yeah, I did just um, grab my bread and cheese, I didn't eat it. Well, if, if you're willing to put on a show, uh, absolutely. Sure. All right. And I hop on the bar. <laughs> as soon as you then, jump on the bar, the dwarf goes up. Ah, 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 none of that in here. Not on the bar. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my lady. I just got a little uh, exa- uh, too excited. And I hop on the stool and I hop next to the stool. <laughs> and I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, the- you are lucky. For tonight, you dine with Richard D. Ross. Now hold your applause. Because tonight, we're not just having a regular show. We're having a fundraiser! (laughs) See, my crew and I, we're here to get rid of that little wolf problem you folks are having. As well as making sure you have a great time and live safe. So, the fine lady over at Wetton General Store offered me this tent here, and I kind of put the tent to the side that I've been carrying around. As a way to kind of boost our adventures, we are going to be auctioning off this tent. (laughs) And with my performance uh, and DJing, uh, we'll raise money for our adventure. This is a premium tent from Wet in General. You know we're all too well. Yep. All right. Are you folks ready? I see a couple people murmuring under their breath over at this table. I know, I know to be asking for gold in a time like this. But this is for the betterment of your community. We're here to help you folks out, but we need supplies, food, and I I whisper under my breath drink. Um, And this is a way, the way to show our gratitude is I will perform. So I take out my, um, let's see here, I take out my uh, lute and I start strumming it. And I perform them, I perform like a, a tune about adventures and melody and fighting off wolves and a young, tall, blonde uh, elf getting the girl at the end of it. Alright, make a make a performance check. Please be high. The work. Shoot, uh, VTT is not found. Give me a second. So you play this ballad. Uh, what, what instrument are you using, actually? Uh, the, I played the flute. Okay. Or not the flute. Um, the lute. Sorry. A, a lute. So you play this ballad of uh, some heroic figure just, just saving the day and righting all wrongs and whatnot. And it sounds all right for a rather uh, uncrowded environment right now in the middle of the afternoon. It's, it's, you know, a little above par for the course of the entertainment you'd expect in a place like this. Um, once you finish, you, uh, get an applause from this gentleman back here and this lady over here. They give you kind of a, like, a not, not an exuberant, like, crazy applause, but just like a, they appreciated the show applause. Now, uh, will anyone be interested in donating to our cause? Like I said, the highest bid here will get this wonderful tent courtesy of the uh, the general store. Uh, this gentleman... I uh, kind of, like, point towards the people who are clapping. Sorry. This gentleman back here uh, holds up his finger and says, I'll give you... Uh, I can throw in two gold for it. Two no. gold! Anyone else would like to contribute? And the woman over here uh, says, Um, uh, two gold and a silver. Two gold and the silver. To which the man... We're travelers. <laughs> oh, sorry. Keep going. The man, it goes back to the man in which he says, uh, three, three gold. To which it goes back to the woman and she ups it by a silver. This repeats about two more times. 
Until the man says, uh, uh, six, six gold. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And six the, gold. And the woman just shrugs. I like you can't hear my clapping on mine, but you can hear Hold it up. on his fucking microphone. Before, before you put your final offer in, let me tell you a story about this tent. How it was created, how it was crafted, how it came to be. <laughs> and I cast, I cast the stork value on the tent. By touching it. I'll okay. Do a spell real quick. Link us link some distort value. Let's see. Ooh. Now that would normally work, but this tent is absolutely more than one foot on a side. Oh okay. I disregard I disregard that then. I'm sorry. Okay. Because it's, it's a cantrip anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, true. All right. With this tent, and I take out a, a dagger, I will throw this dagger in as well for an extra three to four gold. <laughs> if anyone's interested. The, the man who uh, thought he would win with the uh, six gold bid says, oh, uh, wait, I thought that was for the for the tent. Are you Are you selling more stuff? It was just part of my comedian routine I've been working on. I'm kidding, good <laughs> sir. Six gold wins the tent. Uh, the gentleman gets up and heads your way. Uh, and uh, quite happily, he's kind of walking quick over to you and uh, smiling, kind of puts his tongue in his cheeks. He's taking out six gold coins and says, I, I hear you go. Uh, good good, good performance. And uh, look at a fine tent I got now. And he, he picks up the tent with both hands. Thank you, sir. And your name? Uh, I, I'm Jason. Jason. I will remember that every time I take a sleep and next to another tent. I don't know. Hi. Uh, uh, the downfall started to hit me, so I sit down to eat my bread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason starts to take his uh, huge tent. He actually just starts walking out the door with it. <laughs> Is all of you are at the top of the stairs. I'm assuming you're all just looking down, listening to this. Uh, yeah, you know, like a kid in Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I grab my bread, I run upstairs, <laughs> and I'd be like, well, I solved the tent problem. <laughs> you <laughs> the did, The tent great, problem Rick. that you created. You created it. You did. you make profit? He did make You got a one gold, baby! Well, one gold better than nothing. Hey, leave the cat alone. God, these my dogs are harassing my cat. Hey! Chill! Good lord. God. Oh, there he is. There's, there's mom to take care of it. Yeah, get him. Get him. Get him, Bacchus. Y'all can hear her, right? Kind of. All right, I'm going to transition you all over. You all guys all head upstairs on the second level of the Shepherd's Crook. Uh, this area is uh, quite large. It's actually quite about as big as the, the first level was. Uh, a lot of doors lead into various rooms, it looks like. Oh, it smells like Sal after a week of traveling up here. Look, bears are very hygienic, okay? Yeah. At least hygienic I of leaving your trappings all over the place. I don't think anybody... Gotcha. Did anybody find out which room yeah. uh, Feather Rock was in? No. They just told us he was upstairs. I guess we should try every door. <laughs> yeah. I will start with this door. Sal, you get the left. Rick, you get the right. Baka, you take the far right. <laughs> On count of three, we open. Um, I was going to knock first. No. Okay, yeah, that's probably me wise. <laughs> uh, yeah, I knock, on, I knock on the door that I'm at. Okay, you knock on the door. You don't get a response. I also knock on the door. Okay, nope. I knock as well. No response from any of you guys' doors. I, I wait for them. Right, I, I wait for them the to get no response, and then I knock on my door. Can I open the door? 
Uh, you can certainly try. I, I you lock. Damn. Okay. Nope. Uh, I will try uh, this door here. Do I have any response at all, Jimmy, or no? Um, which door are you at? Nope, nothing from that door. I think I'm lagging though. What door are you trying, Arthur? Uh, the one above, Rick. Okay, you should be able to left-click all these doors. It'll either make a lock sound or it'll open on up if you can open it. Oh, oh there we go. So wait, should I just do that oh. for knocking? Uh, you can, if you want to knock, that's fine. Or you can just open a door and potentially walk in on somebody. No, I've been knocking. You haven't given me a response <laughs> as to if this door no is it or not. Response from that <laughs> door, Arthur. When you open that door, you noticed uh, what looked like a halfling under some sheet covers. Um, he, yeah. he looks a little. Uh, he looks like he might be a little sick. Okay. Uh, bang, bang. I, I opened the door. <laughs> Hello? You uh, When you open the door and step inside, you see a... Well, I'll, let me tell you about the room first. The room is small but well-appointed. It's got fresh flowers on the dresser. Um, looks like a really nice room, but you can see a halfling lying in bed. He's white-faced and soaked in his own sweat. Looks like his left arm is bandaged, as is his right leg. Um, he kind of glances over at you as you walk in and says, oh, who, are, who are you? Hello. Uh, we're adventurers. Um, as a matter of fact, I want to know, if, are you, how are you feeling so far? Um, I'm more concerned about his health now. I've, I've been better. I'm a little wounded. And he tries to move his left arm and just winces in pain. Okay. Uh, hey, are you Feather Rock? I pronounce Feather Cock. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Feather Feather Rock. Yes. You're just the man we're looking for. <laughs> I am. Yeah, we have a few questions for you. Is it possible I can make a perception? Uh, what do you want to perceive? I want to examine and see if I can identify what is causing him to be sick. Sure, make a medicine check. Alright. Yes, nice. Okay, so you look at him up and down, and honestly, his bandage wounds don't even really look that bad. Uh, but just looking at his face, his expressions, and his uh, just just the way he's behaving, you think uh, the damage he's taken is more mental damage than physical. Alright, I was trying to see if I could find a spell as well. Um, at this point, guys, I think we should probably take it slow and to try to make as very little conversation to him as possible because it looks like he's not, he's he's like barely out of conscious at the moment. You want to ask him, Arthur, if he needs anything to drink or eat? Yeah, I can actually go do that. Is there anything else? Is there anything I can get you? Water? Do you want some food? Ah, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm fine right now. All right. What about a tune? Uh, uh, what? A tune, a ballad, a poem, a rap. <laughs> um, I g g guess so. That was the expected to say it. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> what would you like to listen about, sir? A story? A tale? A love song? Um, an emo uh, anthem? I, uh, <laughs> maybe a ballad about um, great halls and, and nobles? I, straight, I take out my uh, lute again. I start strumming. Great halls of nobles, <laughs> we got the treasure, yeah, and the prince's daughter, what? <laughs> um, were you trying to achieve something by playing that, Richard? Uh, just to kind of calm him and make him think of something else besides the psychological damage he's going through. Okay, in that case, make a performance check. <laughs> that was great. 
Okay, oh. you you play this, and it's, it it sounds exactly how you just sang it to us. So it sounds a little sounds a little funky, but the, the halfling actually looks uh, it looks like he calmed down and like almost like he started just resting in his bed a bit better. So it looks like you had an effect on him. Arthur, the best medicine is music and love. And I storm out of the room. Is there um, a water bowl next to his bed? Like, there, with water in it? There is. Alright, how is it? Is it empty, or is it full with a cloth in it? Looks like a rag's kind of hanging out of it. Alright, in that case, I wish to um, just heat up the water. I think I can heat up the water. Hold on. Can I? Yeah, I should. Sacred flames? Nah, nah, heat up the water. I just wish to, like, add more water and just probably put the cloth on the halfling's head. Add more water? Can you create water? I can. Let's see, create... Yep, you sure can. Create or destroy water. That is a first level spell if you'd like to cast it. I wish to, please. Okay. Uh, you expend a spell slot for first for uh, to create just a little bit of water as this pristine, fresh water starts filling up the bowl slowly. Sal and uh, Bacchimus, you both can see this happening as he hovers his hand over this bowl. I didn't know he could do that. Me. Alright. And here we go. Feather Moon, was it? Uh, uh, feather. Feather Cock! Oh, yeah. <laughs> feather, feather Rock, but could you... Could you tell the, the kind man with the the, the loot to, to, to stay here? Yeah, Sal, can you go fetch him, please? Uh. Hey, Rick. Sal. And your boy Feathercock would like, uh, request your presence. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? We must have a, uh, a fan. Oh my god. What's up, FC? As I walk back into the room. <laughs> when you enter the room, he says, I didn't have a chance to tell you. Your, your p p p performance made me feel a bit more at ease, and I haven't felt at ease, and it's, it's been a bit now. Thank you. Well, we're about to make you feel more at ease when we kill all these wolves, baby. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, we did have some questions for you about that. He, if it, it's uh, not too much, if uh, if it is too hard, it's it's fine. We have a lot of information already. Um. Uh, he looks a little nervous and says, "I, I, I promise to tell you everything I know, but you have to promise me something first. What is it? You have to promise to believe me." Press me. <laughs> I will. He looks at all the rest of you. The story, from, from what I've heard, you've got some interesting tales, and it might blow this whole case open. But but, but the uh, the others, too? By the power of my goddess, yes, I will believe you in you. Scout's yeah. honor. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, good, good. You're, you're very kind adventurers, especially you. And he nods towards you again, Richard. Um. Okay. I think they were a fan. He likes you. <laughs> we were. I I was part of a hunting group. Uh, to, to 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 go rout the the wolves from the woods. We 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 were ambushed. There were four of us, and we were. Attacked. I was bitten badly, and and then then then, then trampled by the others that, that that were with me as they fled. And I drifted in and out of consciousness. But I remember gr gruff voices arguing in the the darkness, and something tightly tightly gripping my ankle. And he he kind of winces for a moment, and then he uh, looks at all of your faces, almost like he's trying to gauge uh, your expressions. What's everybody look like right now? I'm just like, I'm like, mm hmm, mm hmm. I'm like taking notes and shit. Okay. This is all I've been doing this whole time. I'm just there, um. Well, how would you say 
Mine's holding... concern. Mine's concern and intrigue. Not holding him down, but touching his um, his leg, making sure that he's comfort. Do you know what the gruff voices were saying? Do you have any idea? Like, even if it's just a word. Even if it doesn't make sense. I don't remember specifically, but I did... I can make out some of the stuff they were saying. And who... He looks away. Who was, who was saying it? He turns back what around. What do you mean by... Who was saying it? Oh, sorry. He turns back around and says... The, the the wolves were talking. They were arguing over whether or not they should eat me. They were speaking common tongue. He looks at you and slowly and almost with a stutter, even in his nod, nods. And your party. Hey, were your were your party around? Was your party around you when this was happening? They f- fled the moment we were ambushed and trampled me as they left. So you're the only one who heard them talking. He stutteredly nods again. Could you by chance tell us their numbers? Do you know how many wolves were around you? Like, were they? Did they all see? Them? talk, or was it just a few? I, I only heard a few, but I haven't, I haven't told anyone. They'll think I'm crazy. That's why you had to promise. You don't, you don't think I'm crazy, do you? No. No. I I'll let not. you in on a little secret. I can speak with animals. Well, that's... Yeah, we've seen kind of crazy. crazy stuff in the circus. Yeah, you should see him talking to the birds. The breakfast. Uh, yeah, you know, the birds, here, the bees, you name it. This man over here can turn into a giant bear. And I just point at Sal. I just nod. I don't think you guys are making him feel better. <laughs> he looks at you <laughs> nervously, Sal. Uh, I'm going to lean over and, and I'm going to say, maybe you should give him a lollipop. Uh, and I immediately pull out like, like a premium lollipop, like, like really like nice big swirly one, very colorful, look great. Mm. And I just hand it to him and say, "Here." How much do these this. lollipops weigh? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Where do they come from? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Magic. He uh, he's been covered up to his neck and above, and for this moment he. He slowly just moves the covers down as he takes his good arm and reaches out to grab your lollipop, Bacchimus. Mm-hmm. And then slowly puts it in his mouth, but doesn't show any reaction. Almost like he's still just looking at you all, studying your faces. Um, if y'all mm-hmm. want to, you can make an insight check to determine his uh, kind of his what he's feeling right now. He pulls the covers oh. back up to his neck as yeah. well, with a lollipop sticking out of his mouth still. Yeah, I'd like to do an insight. Sure. Should we all do one? Yeah. Oh fuck, where's insight? Uh, okay, in the middle. Oh god. <laughs> so, Arthur, Thank god we have Arthur. <laughs> we, we all know. Bakaluda and Sal, all of you can see. He's, it's almost like he's still studying your faces, trying to see if you think he's... If you're giving off an expression of, like, disdain or, or thinking he's crazy. Like, he's really, really worried about how you're feeling right now. Um, Richard, you, uh, it looks like something's wrong with his eyes. Like, he's just kind of bug-eyed. Like, he might be, uh, having a stroke or something. <laughs> I can see my, ref- I can see my reflection in them. <laughs> it just looks bug-eyed. That man's having a stroke. <laughs> Anyone got some aspirin? <laughs> Gonna do it, but... Anyone have willow bark? We need willow bark stats. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what they make aspirin out of. Willow bark. Mm-hmm. Medical facts. You get medical facts and D and D all in one. Is there? Nowhere else. Is, is there anything else you can tell us? Like, uh, what direction you were headed in? Uh, did y'all even make it? 
near the wolf's den? Or did they ambush you just in the woods? We were ambushed on the way to where we thought they were. Mm -hmm. We were in northwestern woods. Huge, huge woods. We think they're holed up near the mountain ridge. Was this possibly at Wesley Farm? We had to pass Wesley Farm to get there, yes. Okay. Did the wolves have anything on them? I know that you said they were speaking common tongue, but was there anything else on them that seemed suspicious? Like, articles of clothing, supplies? I couldn't make out anything once I was taken down. I was drifting in and out of consciousness. You're doing great. You've given us a lot of information that we needed. Sounds like we got some intelligent wolves to deal with. We believe you, and we're going to put an end to this, so rest easily. You've been more help than you could be than anyone else here, Feathercock. You've been the best. Um, it's... Oh, yeah, you've given us quite a bit of information. Oh, uh, a uh, fe- uh, oh, okay, thank you. Rest up for now. If you remember anything else of importance, come meet us downstairs. And if you want a drink... It's all in the house. They told me you could drink for free. I'm gonna give him a wink. I appreciate that, but I have I have to stay up here. I can't really walk right now. Now you sure want me to grab you something? Or anything? Oh. Um, I'll 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 be all right. Le- Le- Leandra brings food to me. All right. All right, FC. Call us to be this. Questions. Um, I think you've given us a lot of information. Is there anything else out of the ordinary that you may have seen on the way or anything, like any rumors that you heard before you went out? N- n- no, just just the, the livestock missing and us trying to fix it and then running into the, 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 the wolves. It's all right, it's all right. We're going to take care of that. Don't you worry. Wolves, wolves. I've already taken care of a few. You should see Sal when he's hungry. That's something you should be scared of. Make sure you keep some honey on you. <laughs> oh, Vic, stop, please. <laughs> You're gonna scare the young man. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Or Why don't you play one more song for him and we'll we'll head on out. Maybe he'll come and right. go to sleep. Feather. A fantastic I wrote, cat, feather. I wrote this song just for you. And I, this time I take out my flute and I start going. Doo, 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 doo. His name is Feathercock. He has a feather cock. He likes to rock around with his feather. <laughs> I go, doo, 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 doo. Make a he can beat the wolves. He can beat the bad guys. Everyone's scared because <laughs> he's a feather cock guy. <laughs> Make a performance check with advantage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he enjoyed your last song, so he's already prone to enjoy. Okay, so <laughs> play this song, and uh, he, he sits up a little bit during it as a as one small tear forms in his right eye, and he smiles and nods and says, "You're like a, you're like an angel with an instrument." It's amazing. <laughs> Someone finally appreciates my talent. FC, you all right, man? <laughs> Please come back and and play more uh, when you when you get a chance, or you don't have to. But I, I, but thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Arthur, can I snag a a quill real quick and a piece of paper? Yeah. Um... I ruffle through my backpack and here you go. I sign an autograph and I leave it on his table. <laughs> In case you ever feel sad, tired, depressed, or upset, look at my name and you will feel better immediately and think of the time we shared together. <laughs> and I put, Dear FC, you're cool. Love Richard D. Ross. 
he uh, gr- he picks it up off the table and looks at it, smiling, and just nods at you. <laughs> All right, now you rest up. All right, time to get drunk. See you, FC. Thank you so much for the info. He not, he's he's still smiling and he nods at you as well. Rest well. <laughs> Fucking Sal with his deep ass voice. Yeah. You know, so he thinks I'm a bear. Be- so I guess we should get a room now. Go ahead. Before you guys go downstairs, I need to ask. Currently is eleven eleven, uh, Central Time. I don't know how late y'all want to go, but here's where I would normally call it. But I'll leave it up to y'all if you want to go a little bit more. If I have oh. all tomorrow, so. Let's go. Should we? Are you guys interested in? I I have clinic tomorrow. Uh, are you guys interested in just snagging a room and calling it? Uh, yeah. Bedtime. Can we do right, that? That's cool. Can we at least snag a room so that way, like, we can have our spell slots? Uh, you. How are we doing that? Is that a twenty-four? Uh, that would be an eight-hour full uh, to get a full night's rest, which it wouldn't even be a full night's rest technically, because you guys would be sleeping in the middle of the day because it is about. That's fine. Be about 2 30 p.m. now. You should probably head out in the morning anyways. Oh, it's so. 2 30 p.m. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll just call it then. We'll, we can take, we can, uh, we can go from there next tomorrow time. Tomorrow, we'll figure out what we want to do. Very well. In that case, I'm going to transition us to our just hanging out chat here and cut this town music going on. All right. Session one complete. Good work, everybody. There's your Yay, we did it. introduction to the Wolves of Welton. Hell of a lot of talking. Immediate combat at the start, but a lot of folks. You guys talked to a lot of people and got a lot of information. How are we feeling about it so far? He we threw did. us off of the combat right away. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. I wouldn't either. Yeah, I'm just traveling along the get path. To that, that's actually very true. Sal has a... Uh, has yet to have a moment to really shine. He's he's the Man. he's the gruff. He right now he's the intimidation. He's the gruff guy in the back that yeah. if something's weird, he just he walks up with his arms crossed like and just kind of. I'm the I'm the security. What's going on here? <laughs> but don't don't you that's worry. That's what I imagine. That's what I imagine he was doing. <laughs> like while we were talking to like everyone, Sal just in the corner like. Like Rick's Discord <laughs> picture. Yeah. Vic Vinegar. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it was a lot of like Rick and Baka talking a lot. I I felt like I I was trying to contribute, but like I just I yeah. just stay silent. That's some, that's all. That's what it's all about. It's figuring out the group dynamic early on, right? So this is all y'all's new adventure <laughs> together. One of uh, quite a few coming up. This is kind of an introductory introductory adventure, which I guys you know you guys have done one before, but. We're still learning the ins and outs of what we can and can't do. And right now, as Rick has clearly uh, observed, creativity is can be through the roof. It's whatever you want to make it. You want to play a song whenever, however, you sure can. You want to convince someone and do an auction in the middle of a tavern of a something you just <laughs> bought via a small amount of We're lies great. and a good heart, you can. You know, it's whatever you want to do. But I think it went well. Yeah. I think it went well. Uh if you think Bach and I are, are talking because I, well, I know we took the lead, like feel free to message us and we can like uh, chill out for a little bit. Like uh, that's why I was like really trying not to be in that guy's room because I wanted you guys more to start talking. So I didn't want no, to be I, like, you, oh, yeah. it's you always... got the charisma bonus, dude. I'm a note taker, so I know. I'm gonna ask a lot of really detailed questions. <laughs> and that's always fun. I just, I just like to know when. I pretty much know when I'm needed. Like, for instance, when we walked into Feather Rock's room, I felt like I was needed there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Feather cock. You're doing good. But it's a see, baby. <laughs> Unless y'all got any uh, final comments here, I'm about to drop some closing statements. Anyone got any comments about the session, about each other, about life in general? Anything you want to say, now's your spotlight. Yeah, I'm really sick and tired of Sal smelling like wet fur. It was really gross the whole time, like the entire session. It was very upsetting. <laughs> he sniff sniffing is it's not that bad. <laughs> I'm gonna bring an IRL worse. in real quick. Get vaccinated, not just for COVID, flu shots as well. Save your grandmas. Oh yeah, yeah, that's actually very important. That's uh, that's kind of that's hits uh right next to your line of work, doesn't it? You that's kind of your jam. So yeah, it's a good message. 
Um, anybody, anyone got anything else? Uh, tomorrow's Veterans Day, so in hey! enjoy. It's tomorrow Veterans Day. Oh shit! Yep, it sure is. Oh, eleven eleven. Tomorrow, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was next week. I got a. I got a buddy. On the eleventh hour of the eleventh day. Who's in the Marines? He'll probably be doing something about that. Man, oh, I wonder if that's why it was. He called me like right before our D and D session. I got to call him back. But uh, on, yeah. on that oh, note, yeah. I'm gonna drop some some uh, closing statements here. Everyone out there on Twitch or YouTube, if you're watching this on the later upload, thanks for watching. We greatly appreciate it. If you really like what you saw, please follow. We do this every Monday and now Wednesday and Saturday, all at 8 p.m. Central, except Wednesday. Wednesday will be 8:30 p.m. Central normally. Um, tonight was kind of a, a bonus night. We happened to all be here early, and I forgot that we agreed to 8.30, so that's how it went. But either way, expect 8.30 next time. Um, if you really like what we do, uh, subscribe every little bit. Uh, every subscription, it helps a ton with uh, what we're trying to do in the end here. Hopefully, we might have a studio or something one day downtown. That'd be cool. But either way, I'm just glad y'all were here and um, active as hell in the chat, too. Wow, that's, that's a, lot of, a lot of talking going on. Appreciate it. Um, on that note... That's pretty much all I uh, all I got. Yeah. So again, thanks for being here, and y'all have a good night. Take it easy. <laughs> Bye. 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 I love you. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs>